What is going on guys, my name is Cameron and welcome to the review for the amazing Spider-Man issue 4, Regent has returned, taking down each Avenger one by one, and Spider-Man and Iron Man are next. So towards the end of the previous issue, we saw Betty Brandt go straight up to Augustus Roman and ask him straight up if he was Regent. And to find out what's next, you're going to have to follow me through this review. And I've got to say, there is some awesome moments in this comic. And I cannot wait for you guys to see them. So guys, we need to get into this. So let's do it. So the issue opens up with Regent taking down each Avenger one by one. And I do have to say I am a fan of how the comic actually did this quickly without having to show us a fight from each character. Regent pretty much picked off each Avenger as he went along. And now something that kind of took me by surprise was that he didn't go after Spider-Man and Iron Man first. Because after all, they were the ones that were fighting in the middle of the city. And so you'd think that Regent being the person that he is would probably want to take care of Spider-Man and Iron Man first. But that's just not the case. I was also very fond of how Regent used the powers of the superhero we took down previously to take down the next one. So for instance, Regent used Miss Marvel's powers to take down Nova, and I liked that element of the comic. I also want to point out this hilarious moment on the panel that's on screen right now of that guy watching Nova fly away like that. Now obviously that's actually Regent carrying Nova away, but obviously Regent's invisible, so everyone just thinks that Nova is flying away. Like, this. <laughs> that just, I don't know. It just really makes me laugh thinking of Nova flying away like that. But anyway, on with the comic. Something else that I also noticed is Regent is using Miles' camouflage invisibility power, and he seems to be using this not only to hide himself from all the pedestrians on the ground, but also to take out every single Avenger. And once again, that brings us back around to Miles Morales being the centerpiece of this entire plan. Now, something that I did appreciate was when Thor actually managed to stand up to Regent. Now, we actually didn't figure out what happened after that, but you guys will figure out later in the issue, because obviously, I already know. I also very much love the colours in that conflict between Regent and Thor, it was almost like good and evil coming together. Really cool. So anyway, getting further into the comic, as you can see on screen, Pete Parker and Tony Stark taking responsibility for Miles' disappearance, visiting his family, making it look like Miles has won some kind of scientific program for the greatest minds of the future or something like that to kind of give Miles some leeway on the fact that he's missing for a couple of days. So hopefully that will take the tension off, but I have a feeling because Miles' father knows that Miles is Spider-Man, I was kind of concerned with the fact that Miles' dad, Jefferson, didn't pull Tony Stark and Peter aside and be like, is this a Spider-Man thing? But then again, Again, I don't think Jefferson knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, but he knows Tony Stark is Iron Man, and he knows that Miles is in the Avengers with Tony Stark, so it's kind of like, how did he not ask if it was Spider-Man related? You get what I'm saying? That was one concern about the comic. And now going over to Harry Osborn, meeting up with Augustus Roman, and as you could see back there, we figured out what happened to Betty Brandt. She's actually being put in one of those red tubes held as prisoner. So I think it's obvious by now that Regent is a full-on bad guy. Also, if any of you guys didn't know what was going on with Harry Osborn asking for Augustus Roman's autograph, it was to make sure that Betty Brant came back, because obviously, that meant after she met up with Augustus Roman, she would have to go back to Harry Osborn. But since she didn't end up going back to Harry Osborn, that means something's happened. So just to clear that up, because that kind of confused me a little bit when I read the comic. You guys are also pretty shocked with what's happening on screen. Yes, Aunt May is coughing up blood, and that was something that I wasn't too happy about to beat in the comic, mainly because it's another plot device about Aunt May dying or something like that again. How many times can there be a problem with Aunt May? It seems like something that they just chuck in there to create another plot device, to create some more drama, and I don't really think it was needed, but hopefully that's leading up to something more important in the future, especially because the huge Civil War II event is happening right now, and I don't think it's a coincidence that Aunt May actually got injured in the first Civil War, or just after the first Civil War anyway. So could it be that she's going to like get injured again, or she's going to die or something like that? Who knows? And now we're jumping into the highlight of the comic for me, Harry Osborn being an absolute badass. He knows what he's getting himself into, and he knew what he went there for. He knew that Augustus Roman was regent, and he obviously suspected that Betty Brandt had been kidnapped or something like that. And the way he introduced the Parker Industries webware was such a badass thing to do because he knows he's in a dangerous situation right now. And I don't know what it is, but I think it's just how he stood up to Augustus Roman, knowing that he's regent and stood up to him without fear is a really, really awesome thing to do. And so I think it shows Harry Osborn's passion not only for Parker Industries, but for his friends as well. And that's brilliant. 
Another concern that I had with the comic was Mary Jane not telling Spider-Man that Augustus Roman was Regent. Like, I know she understands the whole secret identity and responsibility, etc., but I thought she would have at least told Spider-Man, but that's that's really me just nitpicking, so it doesn't really matter about that. But I thought it was just something that I'd mention anyway, in case any of you guys agreed with me. Now, going into Regent's powers and how he can, like, copy the powers of other people, it kind of reminded me of that grey villain out of Justice League Unlimited. I think some of you guys will know him, but I can't quite remember his name right now. But if I have to give a theory, I would probably say that they are going to defeat Regent, because not only would he have copied their powers, but he most likely would have got all their weaknesses as well, and I think that's how they are going to defeat him. Very similar to how they defeated that grey android thing in Justice League Unlimited. So that's my theory as to how Regent is going to be defeated. And I don't know if you've noticed, but Regent's assistant keeps kind of popping up every now and again, trying to warn him of something. So I imagine all of these powers combined is just going to break down Regent's body or something like that, especially because he's going crazy with the power right now. And so that cannot be good for his health, especially his vitals, etc. Almost like I expect him to become some kind of nuclear bomb, or maybe he'll transform into something worse. I don't know. But what do you guys think? That is the end of the issue, guys. Let me know in the comment section below, because this issue got crazy and it seems like Regent is going mad with power right now so we're gonna have to see how that plays out in the next issue and I cannot wait for it and a lot happened in this issue so I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10 so much craziness and it really hyped me up for the next issue so that's a good sign that this was obviously a good issue and the characters didn't necessarily play dumb either like Harry Osborn going in there realizing that Betty Brandt hadn't come back was as I've already said awesome and I don't know about you guys but Regent is a very very likable villain there's just something about him it might be his costume or how he looks like Darkseid from DC. He does a little bit, you've got to admit. And so it feels like a fresh take on a new villain and it's really interesting to read about. And now guys, enough of me blabbing on. It's time to end the review and this video. So go to the links in the description to follow me on Twitter and Facebook. The links are in the description. And if you want to support this YouTube channel, then you can click the support RVM button on the banner of this YouTube channel. And last but not least guys, hit the subscribe button if you like these videos, hit the like button and I'll see you all in my next video. Yay!